Skeleton for Dinner by Marjorie Kyler, illustrated by Will Terry. One day, Big Witch and Little Witch decided to brew a stew. They added all their favorite ingredients, shark fins and snake fins, spider silk and centaur's milk, catfish whiskers and banshee blisters. Big Witch took a taste. This is so yummy, she said. Let's invite our friends for dinner. What fun, said Little Witch. I'll make a list. Ghost, ghoul, and... So she's making her list and she's got ghosts, ghouls, and... Skeleton, boomed Big Witch. We must have skeleton for dinner. Just then, Skeleton was clickety-clacking up the hill. So there comes Skeleton. As he reached the top, he saw a Little Witch's list pegged to a tree. He heard what Big Witch said to Little Witch. I think they want to have me for dinner, cried Skeleton. I don't want to be eaten. His bones began to quake and shake. Before the witches saw him, he rat-a-bat-tatted down the hill and jingly jangled as fast as he could to ghosts. They scooted by the graveyard where Ghoul was shoveling dirt. Where are you going in such a hurry? he asked. The witches want us in their stew and they want to eat you too, said Skeleton. Yikes! shouted Ghoul. Let's go hide. And he dashed after the others. Back on the hill, the little witch said, I'm off to invite our friends for dinner. And away she flew on her broomstick. But when she got to skeletons, he was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he's at ghosts, thought little witch. But she didn't see anyone at ghosts house either. I bet they're at ghouls, thought Little Witch. She zoomed to the graveyard. It was as quiet as the moon. Where is everybody, said Little Witch. How can I invite our friends for dinner if they've all disappeared? She flew back to the top of the hill. I couldn't find anybody at home, she told Big Witch. I guess we'll have to eat our stew all by ourselves. And I was really looking forward to our party. She took down the sign and she began to cry. Crow flew down and picked it up. I think I know what's wrong, he cawed, and off he flew, flapping his wings. He went to skeletons, no skeleton. He went to ghosts, no ghost. And he went to ghouls, no ghoul. And then he saw footprints leading into the woods. He followed them to a big tree. Up, up, up he flew. What are you doing here? asked Skeleton. I came to tell you that the witches want you to come for dinner. You mean they want to eat us for dinner, said Skeleton. No, they want to have you for dinner, said Crow. That means invite you for dinner. Oh, said Skeleton. Well, that's different from what I thought. I'm hungry. Let's go. So Skeleton, Ghost, and Ghoul came down from the tree. They picked some poison ivy to take to the witches for their stew. When they got to the top of the hill, the witches were so happy to see them. Their faces lit up like jack-o'-lanterns. Come and eat, shouted Big Witch. Have a seat, shouted Little Witch, and we'll give you a treat, said both the witches together. It looks so yummy, said Skeleton, that I wish I had a tummy. And they all had fun eating the witch's stew together. So today we're going to make our own skeleton. 
So I started by using Q-tips. So you can just sort of use your memory and your own body to try to think about what parts of the skeleton you want to make. It doesn't have to be an exact uh, replica, just generally the outline of the body. So I've done some ribs, I've done arms and hands, legs and feet, and then the face in the middle. So I started off one for us to get going on. So I'm going to add some ribs. So all I do is just take the Q-tips and cut them in half. So I'm going to do five ribs on each side and each rib is just going to be a half a Q-tip. So I'll just take five, five ribs or five Q-tips, cut them in half and then I'm going to do five on each side. So if you take five Q-tips you're going to get ten pieces. So, let's quickly do my ribs, and then I'll show you how I did my skeleton's head. So it will take a few minutes for your glue to set on your skeleton before you can pick your paper up. You can arrange those however you want. Then you can also make your skeleton so that he's doing different poses or moving his arms or legs in different directions. He can look like he's jumping up. So I'll finish adding my ribs. Okay, so for my head, if you can see here, I just used a regular piece of white paper and to try to get his face so that it looks symmetrical, I took a small piece of paper, folded it in half, and then on the fold, I'm going to cut the shape that I want for his head. So you can really cut any shape you want. Um, then unfold it. That's what I have, but I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to cut a nose. So I'm just going to cut a notch out for a nose. And then for the eyes, I just folded the corner in and I cut another notch out of that corner. And then I fold the other corner in. So you can make your nose and your eyes whatever shape you want. You can make them round, you can make them curved. I'm trying to make them scary looking. I'm just going to cut this one a little rounder. And then down at the bottom for the mouth, I folded it back and I just did a zigzag cut. Go up and down, and I actually cut my paper in two. So when I glue that on, it's going to look like his jaw. So add the bottom of his mouth on. Some of my Q-tips aren't dry. <clears throat> so I add that on the top. That's his head, his skull. So then to finish him off, I just cut the end of a Q-tip off, so just the cottony part of the Q-tip, and I added that for his fingers, and I've added that for his feet down at the bottom. So you can add as many bones as you want to your skeleton. He can be just a few bones, or you can make him very detailed with all the same bones that you have in your body. So good luck making your skeleton.